What's up guys, my name is Michael Lynn, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to go over this next problem for Code Forces 629, Division 3, Tree Queries. Okay, we are actually going into some uncharted territory, but I hope I could explain it to you guys. And pretty much, uh, even though I don't really, I couldn't solve this at all, I hope I could explain the editorial to you guys. Right, so you're given a root of a tree with n vertices, one n. The root of the tree is a vertex number one. A tree is a connected undirected graph with n minus one edges. You're given m queries, and then you're given a set of k vertices. Your task is to say if there is a path from the root to some vertex u such that each of the given k vertices either belongs to this path or has a distance one to this path. Okay, so it's pretty hard to explain what they mean by this problem statement, so I'm gonna go over pen and paper and show you guys what they mean by this. What do they mean by the problem statement? So we need to f print out yes or no. If I could start from the root and I traverse downward to a vertex that has a path where all the vertices of my input statement are gonna be in that path either in that path or be one distance away from it. So that means, so in this case, we have three, eight, nine, ten. 10. We see here that if I were to start from my root one and go down to 10, right? Through this path, uh, one, three, seven, nine, 10. I know that three, eight, and nine is in this path. Uh, not three, eight, nine, three, nine, and 10. Three, nine, and 10 is in this path, right? So like, if I traverse from one to 10, one, three, seven, nine, 10, like if I go down this, this path, right? One, three, seven, nine, 10. I know that three, nine, and 10 is in this path, right? And eight is one distance away from it, from my path that I'm traversing downwards to, okay? So what this problem statement is saying is that we need to print yes or no if given a node, like uh, given this this query of array values, right? Uh, if there is a node where I could traverse uh, all all through all the vertices in this array through that path, or it's at least one distance away from it. Okay, so the reason why eight is one distance away from seven. See, like eight, this this value is one distance away. Right? Like we're assuming each depth is value one, right? So we see that eight is one distance away from seven. So that's the reason why this array returns yes. Okay, like if I were to traverse downward through this path, one, three, seven, nine, ten, we see that three, nine, and ten is exactly in this in this path, and uh, eight eight is one distance away. So that's basically what the problem statement is asking: is that does there exist a certain path that I could go to traverse downward in it? and all the vertices in my array, the input that they give me is in that path or it's at least one distance away from that path, like eight, okay? So I didn't actually figure out, I couldn't figure out this problem myself, so I'll just explain the editorial for you guys, so I'll start there now. Okay, guys, so I'm gonna start with first things first, okay? So let's assume that we have the largest depth. Okay, we have the node with the largest depth. So in this case, it's 10. I'm gonna call this FV. If I know this is the largest depth, then I know that assuming that this, this array works, right? This array, this array works. That means that every single vertex before it must either be in the same path of the, as this largest depth or it's one distance away from it, okay? That's what I know. So I'm gonna call this uh, largest depth FV, right? Uh, the reason why we know this is because like, in this case, we saw from our input statement, this returns yes, right? And that's because, well, 10 is the largest depth, and from this, from this path that we go from one to 10, three, eight, and nine is in this path of one to 10, right? This path of one to 10. And uh, it's either in this path of one to 10 or it's at least one distance away from this path, okay? 
So that's what we know in the beginning. Now, what's next? Um, so now let's take every single node in our input statement. Every single node in our input statement, right? So three, eight, nine, ten, except for the largest one. So except for FV. So we are going to replace three, eight, nine, uh, three, eight, and nine with its parent. Okay. So what is its parent? So with three's parent is one. So I'm going to replace three with one. Eight, eight's parent is seven. So I'm going to replace it with seven. Nine's parent is uh, seven. So I'm going to replace it with seven. And then ten, I stay there. Okay. So if I replace all the, the all the other nodes in my in my um, in my input statement, right, my input array with its parent, I know that um, if the answer is yes, if each vertex after the after this replacement belongs to the path from the root to the largest node. Right. So in this case, all the every vertex here now, at like after I replace it with the parent, right? Besides the last the largest one, belongs to the path from one to ten. Right? So the largest FV. See uh the path from one to ten is one, three, seven, nine, ten. And all the nodes before here, see uh one seven seven, right? That these nodes belong to the path from one to ten. Okay, so that's we have to make that clear. Okay, so the answer would be yes if this is true. Like if it's not, then that means that uh, it's not possible, right? Okay, so now we just have to need to check if this is true. Uh, if this statement is true, like uh, if the 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 nodes here, uh, all the parent belongs to the largest path. Um, so we could do this with a very simple technique. We are going to run depth first search from the root and calculate every vertex for the first time we visit it with a time, time in and out. Okay, time in and out. So initially the time is going to start at zero and then we are going to have a time in and out. Okay, so like uh, let's say I run depth first search from here, one. <clears throat> and uh, my 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 time from one to ten. I calculate the time it takes. So it starts at zero. Goes one, two, three, four. How many? How much time it takes, right? And I go up to ten. Okay. So I need. I know that the time it takes for one to ten is a certain number of in and out. Okay. If I do that for every single vertex, I know that uh, if the time in and out is in in the between the boundaries of whatever I'm checking, I know it's an ancestor of each other. Okay, that's what I mean. So, like, let's say for for one to ten, let's say for the one to the time it takes for one to ten, let's say I, I have like a time from one to ten, it takes like I don't know, uh, five seconds, uh, zero seconds to like five. Okay, right. And then if I were to take the time of three to nine, okay? This time of three to nine, right, is we know it's going to be uh, between the time it takes from one to 10. So if the time of three to nine is like, I don't know, two, two seconds to four seconds, right? So this is, this is gonna be the time of three to nine, three to nine, and then this is gonna be time of uh, one to 10. If I know my t uh, my intervals for my time, t in and then t out, is like inside my larger interval of zero, uh, my larger interval of zero to five, I know it's an ancestor of it. Okay, I know that's an ancestor of it, so I don't have to calculate uh, this crazy algorithm, lowest common ancestor, and stuff like that. So yeah, that's pretty much it. So okay. So how do we check if whatever node I'm currently at is in the path from one 
uh, in the path from the root to the largest node, right? To the largest node. Uh, we can know this is true if the node I'm at, which is let, let's say u, right? If u's, if the, if the root <coughs> one is a parent of u, so let's say I'm checking three. I'm checking three is in this path of one, three, seven, nine, ten. Well, the root here, the root one is a parent of three, right? So it's definitely in this path, okay? Of uh, one, three, seven, nine, ten. And uh, the uh, root, the node I'm at u is the parent of fv, okay? So here, three is a very, very large grandparent of fv, fv, the largest depth. So that's why three is in the path from one, three, seven, nine, ten. Okay. So yeah, that's how you check it. So now let's go to the code and then we'll go over the code together. All right, guys. So I'm going to explain their code on how they did theirs. Okay. So I actually just rewrote most of the variable names to make sure that like, uh, it's more readable. So first of all, uh, we have to read a number of vertices and then the number of queries. So that's N and M. Okay, uh, then because we have a number of vertices, I created, you got to create a graph of, uh, I did M plus one because like we're indexing at one, right? And then depths, uh, indexing N plus one also, so we're indexing at one. And then we got to create our T in and T out, which is like the uh, time in and time out for each vertex, right? And then we put it as N plus one. So yeah, after that, we're going to loop from uh, zero to n minus one because that's the number of uh, vertexes that they said uh, at least in the input statement that's what they said so then then what we do is we read in each vertex u and v uh, so like u and v are like the two vertexes that are connected so to to add that to our graph we just uh, push back the each adjacency li uh, list at each adjacency list we're going to push back u to push back v and then v is going to ha have uh the value u right v, v is going to have uh the the adjacency li matrix uh adjacency list at v is going to have u there also so this would show the neighbors okay so use neighbors is going to have a v v is going to be one of the use neighbors and then v's neighbors is going to be u okay so that's going to create our graph for us okay uh then we're gonna set time which is t t is the time total time we're gonna set that to zero in the beginning right then we're gonna call dfs so we're gonna run dfs so in dfs we're gonna have a current node the one that we're passing in and the parent and then the depth the current depth right so originally the parent is gonna start at negative one and then when we keep calling dfs we're gonna uh change this pass in the current node right each time so then uh we could add a uh, uh, we have could have our this is to tell give us array of the parents right and uh, this is the depth the current depth okay so what do we do so uh above i also created uh depths and parents array uh vector array right and then uh what i did was i added uh the current node into the the current node we're gonna add the current depth like the for the depths array we're gonna set the current node to equal to the current depth and the parents node current node to equal to its parent okay and then we're gonna set our timer at the current node is gonna set to equal to t and then we add one by t and then this is gonna run dfs so what does this do this is gonna go through every single um, neighbor it's gonna go through every single neighbor of the current node right current nodes neighbors right that's how adjacency matrixes uh, adjacency lists work for graphs um if the current node is not equal to parent so like this this prevents you to going through the same loop over and over again in your graph right so if the, my current node uh, if my current neighbor i'm at is not the parent right so then then i could run dfs so i'm gonna run dfs and i'm gonna pass in my current neighbor and then i'm gonna pass in my current node so then now the current node is now the parent and then this would run for uh, for us. So this, so if we pass in like the parent as like uh, the uh, parameter, 
that actually helps a lot because what that does is uh, we don't have to have like a visited array. So yeah, th this helps a lot. And then I'm gonna add depth plus one every time I run this so then I don't have to, yeah, so depth plus one basically adds one to the depth. And uh, every time you go through a DFS again, like depth first search again, uh, your depth is gonna increase by one. After this DFS, we're going to uh, set our t out at the current node to equal the time, and then we're going to update the time, t++. Okay, so after DFS is run, uh, remember we read in the number of queries, right? Uh, this is the number of queries, so the while m minus minus is going to read in uh, every single query, right? Okay, so k is the length of the each query, which is the input array. Remember we said that's the one that we have to check. So then uh, what I did was uh, created the input array with the value k. And then I'm going to read in every single value for our input array. Okay, so now here's the thing, what we have to do. So remember we have to find the maximum depth node, which is the one that in that 10, the one that we saw in t like uh, the 10 in the example case. So what do you have to do? You have to loop through. Remember our DFS already set our depths array, right? Our depths array, right? So then now what we do is we're going to loop through every single node in our input array that they gave us, right, uh, input array. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to get every single depth at every single input array. And then we're gonna check if this depth, like the current depth is greater than, greater than uh, our, the, the uh, depths at the max depth node, right? So remember we have to get the node that has the maximum depth. And so yeah, the, that's what this variable does. So then once, it, if it's greater than it, then we're gonna set our maximum depth node to equal to the current node, okay? To the current node that we're, we want to find, okay? So once I have the maximum depth node, right? The node with the maximum depth, which was 10, right? Uh, I'm gonna loop through my current, uh, loop through my input array again. And then, uh, if it's not the maximum depth node, right? I'm gonna check if the parent is not the root, because if it's not the root, then, uh, that's good. Then we're going to have to set each value in our input array to be the parent. So remember that 17710. Yeah, we got to do that. We had to set each value in our input array to be its parent. Okay, uh, once we've done that, we have to do a, we're going to have to have a Boolean OK, which is equal to true. Uh, so once this is done, that means that all my values in my input array is going to be its parent, right? So now that uh, that's uh, done, then we're going to have to loop through all our input array values again. And we have to check if each of our input value is actually an ancestor of the maximum depth node. So then remember the maximum depth node is a uh, 10, right? We got to make sure that is um, uh, all the input values are is the ancestor of the maximum depth node. And uh, yeah, yeah, is ancestor. So to do that, we have to have a function called is ancestor which checks if uh, the input array uh, the whatever value pass in is the ancestor of the maximum depth node and how did we do that uh, on pen and paper you basically have to ch return the make sure the time in and time out is between it so like if the time in and time out for you is like between the bounds of uh, the time in and time out of v like v's bounds greater than that means uh v is an ancestor of u okay that's what it means um yeah v is an ancestor of v. i think that's how it works yeah then uh then after that uh this skin is going to return a boolean every single time to check if it's an actual ancestor and then what do we do uh we have a, our total boolean which is equal to true and then we're going to and it by the return statement. So what's that gonna do is that's gonna make sure that every single node in the uh, node in the input array, right, is gonna have the ancestor of uh, maximum depth node, right? So yeah, that, after that, if it's okay, we're gonna print yes, otherwise we're gonna print no. So that's the whole code. I hope you guys understood this, uh, yeah. Ray, comment, subscribe, try coding this yourself, and then uh, try coding it yourself again without looking at their source code or this source code, and then see if you could do it. If you could do it, then that means that you understand the algorithm. And yeah, Ray, comment, subscribe. I'll check you guys later. Peace.